Hello, my name is Muhammad Amir Ashraf Ben Yasuri. I'm a third year civil engineering student from University of Malaya, currently performing my internship at Johan as a site engineer at G550 Skyler Resident located at Changkat Raja Chula. In this video, we will be discussing about low strength impact integrity testing for deep foundation and parts. Meant by PIT. PIT is a pi integrity test which generally referred to as a qualitative evaluation of the physical dimensions, continuity of a pile, and consistency of the pile material and structure. Therefore, it can be used to determine the quality, the length of the existing or newly constructed pile. It is important to test piles because defect can occur during the construction and installation of piles and also as the pile edges, voids, cracks, necking, and soil inclusion can all impact the integrity of pile structure. Therefore, it is important to find proper tools for effective quality control and assurance of the pile. Unlike beams and column, piles are buried underground with only the pile head accessible, developing test method to assess the quality and integrity of the pile head is very important and very useful. All of the pile integrity problems are coming from the pile construction. We move on to the pile construction methods. There are three types of pile construction method, which are dry method. In this procedure, the borehole is excavated and backfilled directly with concrete. For the second method, which is casing method, in this procedure, the temporary casing is used to support the borehole. It is also purposely to prevent from caving and prevent intrusion of groundwater before placement of concrete. And the last method is direct slurry displacement method. In this method, drilling fluid is used to stabilize the borehole during the excavation. The liquid is then displaced by placing concrete under the fluid through the training pile. This is the example of the pile position method for casing. Now, we move on to the soil inclusion. Inclusion of a flooring material, soil lumps, slurry within the body of the pile can negatively impact the integrity of piles and deep foundation. The formation of soil inclusion was from the casting process of both pile that did not follow the proper method, which is the overpulling of trimmy pipe above the concrete level. This can potentially create the gaps over the pile line. Those here are the proper method of bore pile casting process. The trimming pipe need to always stay at least 3 meter line inside the concrete level. Here, shown the process on how the soil inclusion is formed based on the overpulling trimming pipe.
we proceed to the necking of the source for the formation of necking is during the process of extracting both parts casing it can be happened at soft sandy soil profile the soil can fill up the casing spacing during the extraction process other than that when the extraction is too fast the bow hole wall also can collapse and started filling the casing spacing here are the process of formation pile snaking We will proceed our video with the pile bulging. Bulging is also defined as a kind of pile shape imperfection that it increases the pile cross section in certain areas along the pile line. But the imperfection does not require any rectification. This is because the bulging may increase the pile ultimate load capacity up to 100%. It is still considered as pile defect and should be investigated. We will move on on how to evaluate the pile integrity and the theory behind the low strength impact integrity test. Several different methods have been developed for evaluating integrity in deep foundation of parts. The main one can be seen as listed. In this video, we will be focused on the low strain impact integrity testing for deep foundation. The low strain pile integrity test is a common non destructive testing method for evaluating the quality and integrity of parts. The low strain pile integrity test belongs to the family of shelf head impact tests, where the response of an impact made on the pile head is recorded by a motion transducer and used for analysis. Its concept of the test is based on wave propagation through the cross-sectional area of the pile detected in the changes of pile impedance, which is Z equal to E A over C, E equal to Young modulus, C equal to wave speed, and A equal to cross-sectional pile area. So based on the equation, we can determine the difference in the cross-sectional area of the pile. Pile integrity test can be used evaluate the integrity and consistency of the pile materials, determine the annual lengths of piles and shelves, and predict the changes in the pile cross-section. The main three items you need to have to perform a pile integrity test is first, you will need a motion transducer. This is typically an accelerometer or geophone. The second is an impact source, which usually a handle hammer. And lastly, you will need a device for data acquisition, recording and analysis. The general principle behind the pi integrity test is relatively simple, but it's to mean the stress wave travel at the speed of C inside the pipe shop. The pile depth can be determined by measuring the time lapse t between the striking pile head and receiving reflection on the pile head. The strength wave speed depends on the property of concrete. As the concrete strength grows, so does the stress wave speed. Shows here 3600 meter per second for medium strength while 4400 meters per second for high quality concrete. While integrity tests provided a cost effective and easy to implement procedure for evaluating quality and deformation, the test able to identify the location and severity of major defects. 
it also extremely quick evaluation can be done. The test does not provide any information on load bearing capacity of the piles. Moreover, the very nature of the test requires certain conditions to be met. For example, poor quality of pole head, presence of cracks underneath the pile head will impact the test result. In addition, the test cannot be performed on concrete piles with a pile cap already in place. In the case of existing piles and foundation, interaction between the foundation and the superstructure might affect the accuracy of the quality data. Pile integrity tests are very sensitive to the pile length and pile diameter ratio. Then, we need to keep an eye on changes in the cross-section area of the pile. Therefore, piles with highly variable cross-section will be difficult to evaluate during this method. If there are any number of discontinued news in the pile, it makes data interpretation very difficult. In order to perform the reliable pile integrity testing, the engineer or operator should make sure certain conditions are met. The following will review some major steps in preparing the pile for the test and performing test. According to ASTM 5882, Pile integrity test should be performed either after day 7 of casting done or after concrete achieves 75% of its design strength or whichever happened first. Preparing the pile head is an important step in evaluating the integrity of piles. The pile head should be accessible and above the water level at the time of testing. To prepare the pile, you can remove the loose concrete patches at the surface using hacker. Any debris or soil that could affect the bond between the pile head and shunt user should be removed before the placement of the sensor. In order to collect quality test results, the operator or the tester should make sure there is a good bond between the motion transducer and the pile head. The acceleration sensor should be firmly attached to the pile head. To make this happen, the coupling or bonding material is normally used to attach the transducer to the pile head. This can be accomplished by applying a thin layer of wax, petroleum jelly, plasticine or needable putty on the tip of the transducer and pressing the accelerometer hard to the surface of the pile head. The placement of the transducer depends mainly on the pile cross-section dimension. For piles with diameter less than 500 mm, it is normally recommended to place the transducer at the center of the pile and applying several impacts around it. For the piles that have larger than 500 mm, it is recommended to place the transducer on at least three different locations. Several impacts should be applied and recorded at each location. The pile head should be impacted using a handle hammer no more than 300 mm further away from the transducer. It is also recommended to avoid placing the transducer near the edges of the pile head. Another important issue is making sure that accelerometer is vertical. It must be in 90 degrees angle from the pile head. For best result, make sure the impacts are applied parallel to 90 degree axis when it comes to testing. If only individual signals are recorded, at least 10 impacts should be applied and recorded per part. A more common practice to use a certain number of impacts, for example, performing 3 impacts and using the average signal. Low strength impact integrated tests can be performed either by using a regular handle hammer or it can be called as an impact hammer. The hammer can be as light as a couple of hundred grams to a relatively heavy option. A smaller hammer can have higher frequency contact and shorter rise time. However, when the size is reduced, the frequency content in the impact increases. Hammer less than 1 kg in a plastic impact tip larger for most cases. When the pile diameter is larger than 1 meter, heavier hammer will be more suitable. The tip should be made of a material that does not damage the concrete during the impact, 
as it will affect the result of the test. These are some examples of PIT test video have been recorded by me, which have been performed on site. This is the video of the PIT test that people from on site at the lift pit. Once the test result has been collected, then we will move on to the data analysis. In general, the test result from the pi integrity test are displayed in two dimension chart. The average signal is used for the purpose of the analysis, the horizontal axis and the timestamp or pi depth. The conversion between the two can be done by using equation provided in the earlier slides. The vertical axis is the normalized amplitude of the signal. The value of the amplitude is generally no significant use in the pi integrity testing. However, it visually helps the engineer to identify equals form, the pi to internal anomalies. These are some examples of typical reflectograms, which for bulging and leaky. For the first result, interpretation is the time taken for the wave to travel from the top of pile, flattened back at the bottom and reaching top again is 2L over C, which is L equals to the length of pile. Then, first arrival of the signal equals 2 times the full length of pile. The most important part for the interpretation is impedance decrease resulting in positive wave, while impedance increase will be resulting in negative wave. So, Neki or inclusion appears as a positive negative cycle at the part shaft. For the second result interpretation is the T equal to zero, which is initial blow, is detected as deep in the velocity traced at 0.0, .0 meter. And when the waves travel down until the pile toe, it represents a reduction in pile impedance. One, it reflected back to the pile head. It is recorded as a dip in the signal. For second interpretation results, specifically for making or crack, at first, the trace will dip below, then immediately rises above zero at the defect location. It happened due to the stress wave passed from the original into reduced cross-sectional area. Then, followed by the rise to a level above the zero line. The rise in the trace is caused by the reflected compression wave which is generated by relative increased impedance as the wave passes out the crack and back to the original pile cross-sectional area. In order to perform successful pile integrity testing, it is essential that the operator collects quality records on the field. To do so, several impacts should be taken for the consistency and repeatability. That's all from me. Thank you.